So everybody, it's Hooks here, and welcome to the very first week of the MLBA. Season 3, we are going off against James Sanity and the Columbus Chew. They have a pretty threatening team versus ours. Uh, I didn't do a team builder segment for this because I'm kind of on a crunch for time. Uh, so I already had the battle, and it's kind of weird to do the team builder after the battle. But anyways, uh, here I'm just going to briefly go through uh, what I have on my team. I have a specially defensive... Uh, Gashadon to deal with things like the Blacephalon, the Megalodios. I have a physically defensive Amoongus. This was to deal with uh, Mincino or Chinchino, whichever one it is, if it got brought. Uh, it can also switch into things like the Hitmontop. Uh, it can just generally take physical hits and then uh, it's holding the Rocky Helmet to do that recoil damage. Next up I have a Scarfed Gardevoir. Uh, I'm carrying Trick on this thing to try to trick the Vaporeon, and I have Shadow Ball and Moonblast as coverage moves with Heal Bell just in case there's toxic shenanigans. I have a pretty standard Megalopony set except for the fact that I'm carrying Ice Beam for Orlando T. I have uh, Return, Drain Punch because High Jump Kick is not worth bringing when there's a Vaporeon. And then I have Fake Out. Uh, my Crocodile is an Intimidate uh, defensive set. I have Max Special Defense, Max HP with Bulk Up. So if there is a time where I can get an Intimidate drop on something, go for a bulk up. I can take on a lot of his team. I'm also carrying the Gachi Berry for the Weavile. And then I have the Zygarde 10% with a Life Orb and a Dragon Dance set of 1000 Arrows, Outrage, and Extreme Speed. So yeah, looking at his team, I want to get up rocks as soon as possible just because uh, getting... The 75% on the Weavile secures a kill with an extreme speed from Zygarde. Getting 25% on Blacephalon is really nice because that thing is incredibly frail and just about any uh, like neutral attack can take it down from one of my offensive ones. So that is pretty much my game plan. I'm going to start the battle. And as I said, I'm going to lead off with my Crocodile as he leads off with Landorus. We intimidate each other, which is fine. I assume he's either going to go for Rocks here or U-Turn, but he does hard switch. And him hard switching tells me that he doesn't have the U-Turn, because if he did, he would have used it. Uh, the reason I don't think, like... So if he was predicting I was Scarfed, and maybe he's like, oh, I don't want a U-Turn because this could be Scarfed. I don't think anyone would predict that because who would lead Intimidate Scarf Crocodile? Like, that's just kind of weird. Uh, maybe he was just being cautious, but he does go into his Weavile. Now, as I said before, I am running the Yachi Berry. So my plan here is I'm just going to stay in on this Weavile and knock it out because it's going to go for either a nice punch or an ice school crash which is not going to kill me due to my yachi berry and i'm going to be able to knock out this weavile even through the intimidate however i get flinched by the ice school crash now this flinch is huge because this crocodile its set is able to take on like wadios if needed uh, i mean obviously not at this low hp but getting rid of the Weavile would have been incredibly amazing because then my Amoongus no longer fears the Ice Attacks, my Zygarde no longer fears Ice Shard, my Gardevoir doesn't fear Ice Shard anymore. It would have been amazing to get rid of this thing, but uh, I did get flinched down and I lost my Crocodile now. As I said, this was huge. This is not good at all. Even if I did not knock out the Weavile, uh, I could have knocked it out later with anything because it would have been low enough so this is like already starting off really poorly so i do go into lopeny knowing uh that the weavile like it's not going to want to stay in on me so i go lopeny and then i actually double into gashadon now i went gashadon either predicting the landris or the vaporeon to try to come in on the lopeny uh however he goes hit on top which is totally understandable uh that's also a decent switch in but he probably isn't going to want to stay in against the Gashadon, or he's going to spin away rocks. So I do go into Amoongus as he does spin away the rocks uh, to force him to take the Rocky Helmet damage. And then uh, here, he switches out into his Latios as I go for a Sludge Bomb. Now, I do get fortunate and get the poison, uh, so that is a good thing, although I don't think it ends up mattering because I do go Gardevoir. He goes for the Dragon Dance. 
and then his best move to hit me with is the Zen Headbutt, which fortunately I don't get flinched, and I am able to knock him out with the Moonblast. Uh, I don't know if the poison mattered, I don't think it did. I think Moonblast would have knocked him out anyways, unless he was like heavily specially invested, which based on the sludge bomb damage, it did not look like he was HP invested. So the Moonblast would have knocked him out even without the poison. Uh, so yeah. Then he goes into the Blacephalon, and I go into my special response being the Gastrodon. Now here, I kind of play with fire a little bit, and I go straight into my Lopunny. Now this is assuming he's Choice Scarfed, and uh, he is Choice Scarfed. So I'm going to go into Lopunny, and I believe I just go for the Fake Out to see if he stays in or not. Uh, or I might just return here. I did just return here, so I was really ballsy thinking uh, that he was Scarfed. Now I do crit this hit on top, but again, I don't know if this mattered because I think I would have two hit KO'd the hit on top. Uh, if he was choice scarfed, I don't know if he outspeeds. Um, so again, I don't know if this crit mattered. It might have, but the hit on top, in my opinion, wasn't a huge threat anyways, and he spun away the rocks after killing my rocker. So I don't really know if the hit on top uh, would have made a huge difference. Now here, I make a big misplay by switching out, and I'll explain why I switched out. So, in my mind, he goes into Landorus to get the double Intimidate, because he's intimidated me once with him on top, he's intimidated me twice with Landorus. Now, I'm thinking in my head, he doesn't have U-turn, I haven't seen anything, well I assume he doesn't have U-turn, but I haven't seen really anything that this Landorus has to offer, other than, you know, it's intimidated. So I'm thinking, this is probably a bulky Landorus with a Yachi Berry, right? Or he doesn't have a Yachi Berry. Either way, because he could be predicting the Ice Punch. And in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, maybe he goes Vaporeon here. So I go into the Gardevoir, trying to trick the Vaporeon. However, he sets up a Rock Polish. Now, this is not good. So I do have to let my Gardevoir go down here. And I could have gone Amoongus, uh, predicting the Earthquake. But I didn't want to go into Amoongus and then have him go for Fly and EMZ. But then once I see that he's Life Orbed and not Fly and EMZ, I'm like, okay, I can go Amoongus. But I'm still kind of sweating because even if he has regular Fly, he can Fly and then on the second turn hit me. And I don't know if it knocks me out with my spread uh, since he's not Fly and EMZ, but it's going to do a lot. If not, it might actually even knock me out. So I'm like, this is bad. Like this Landers is a problem. However, fortunately for me, he does switch out into the Blacephalon and I do get an HP Ice off on that, which does barely any damage. I am able to go Gastrodon on the Fire Blast. Now, I think he kind of wisened up here as to not go for Fire Blast, or sorry, not go for Shadow Ball because I do have the Lopunny, uh, which can come in and obviously absorb that hit. So my Gastrodon is able to take the Fire Blast and now he's kind of locked into it. So I'm thinking, okay, I could recover here, but he's probably gonna go Vaporeon or he's going to predict me to recover and just attack again, or he's going to predict me to recover and go into the uh, Weavile and go for a knockoff. Now, going for a knockoff might be a bad idea because he could get skull burned. Uh, I could also have the sticky hold item, which would prevent me from losing the item in the first place. But really, even if he goes Vaporeon, which he did, going for skull doesn't really, it doesn't really affect me. So now I'm thinking, okay, I want to earth power to maybe get a special defense drop because my moves are Scald, Earth Power, Ice Beam, and then Recover. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe I should try to get a special defense drop on this thing because he's probably going to have like Toxic or some way to wear me down is what I'm thinking. Uh, but then he ends up going into the Landorus and I'm like, okay, that's fine. Uh, I'm just going to go for an Ice Beam, but this Landorus is incredibly offensive and just knocks me out. Now I do go into Lopin here and this is where the fun begins. <laughs> So here I could have uh, just gone for the Ice Beam, but I was fairly positive he was going to switch. I should have gone for Return instead of Fake Out, but my mindset was, well, if he doesn't switch, it's not the end of the world. Because if he stays in and I Fake Out, I'm totally safe, and then I can either go for Return or Ice Beam that turn. So I was thinking, you know what, just Fake Out, it's the best play I can make. And he does switch into the Vaporeon, and I'm able to get a lot of damage off of the Return as he Baton passes back into the Landers. Now, I'm in not so free as a position, because now that he's intimidated me, I have to choose between, okay, do I want to return the incoming Vaporeon, or do I want to Ice Beam the Landorus? 
in comes the Vaporeon, and I did go for the Ice Beam. Now, the reason I went for Ice Beam is because I know even with the Intimidate, I can still do a lot of damage to this Vaporeon, and I really cannot risk losing this Lopunny. If I'm able to knock out either the Vaporeon or the Landorus, I have a decent shot at winning if I play my cards right. However, he is going to go back into the Vaporeon. He is going to survive the return and go for a wish. Now, had I double returned there instead of Ice Beam, the Vaporeon would be gone. Now, if I went for a return instead of the Ice Beam the first time, he may have gone back into Landorus, and then it would have put me into another 50-50, so I still stand by my play of going for the Ice Beam, because even if I went for double return, there's no guarantee that he would have stayed in with Vaporeon to just let it die, because if he did let it die, then the Landorus was dead if, if he goes into that. If he goes into the Blacephalon, I can go into Zygarde because he doesn't have the boost yet, and I'm pretty sure I can take one fire blast uh, without the boost i could be totally wrong on that uh, but i do resist it and he has the chance of missing if he goes like weavile i can just stay in and knock it out like i don't know it it, it was just there was a lot of 50 50s and it was easier for him to decide which move to make because he always had the safe play of going into vaporeon because he knows that i can't knock him out with return Granted there, I could have two hit KO him with return. So really, it, it just, it would have been a big prediction game for me and I was just put in a bad position and I made a couple misplays. So here I go into my Moongus knowing that he's gonna protect uh, and I believe I go for the Sludge Bomb. So here was another time where I was fairly certain he was gonna switch. Like. A thousand percent positive, which is why I went for Sludge Bomb instead of Giga Drain. The better play there would have been going into Lopunny, but the reason I didn't is because it would have put me in the same position as before. If I went Lopunny, he probably would have gone into Landorus, or he could have gone into Vaporeon, which leaves me with the question, do I Ice Beam or Return? Now I believe after the Wish the Vaporeon was at, uh, it's not telling me it's HP, can I go back a turn? Uh, I believe he's going to be around like 60, 70-ish. Uh, yeah, so he's at 61. So my return without the Intimidate to uh, the Vaporeon did 38.8%. So basically, if, if right here, this play, instead of Sludge Bomb, had I gone for uh, going into the Lopunny against the Blacephalon, it would have been either do I return the Vaporeon for a 2 way KO, or do I Ice Beam the Landorus that's obviously going to try to intimidate me. It's just, again, a lot of 50-50s. Had I had my Crocodile, some of these decisions could have been easier because I could have been intimidating the Landorus, which would have made my plays a, like, a lot easier to decide what I'm going to do because a minus one attack Landorus is not as threatening to me. Uh, but he does knock me out, he gets the beast boost, and at this point it's pretty much over. Uh, I wasn't confident that Zygarde would be able to take a plus one thing. I should have faked out here um, it, on the off chance I got a crit, but whatever. It, it didn't matter. I go into Zygarde, he intimidates me with the Landorus as I go for a Dragon Dance. Now, um, in my calc, I had the Landorus set as Flyneam Z for whatever reason, because I put the landers back in and I forgot to switch it to Life Orb. So if he was Jolly Flying EMZ, there was like a really small chance I lived this, but obviously he's Life Orb, um, so I couldn't live. The best thing I could do here uh, was Outrage, but if I went Outrage, then I just die to Weavile, and I would have had to crit right here to knock him out. Um, so I did go for the Dragon Dance to get the plus one attack, because even with the plus one attack, it's still a damage roll to knock him out uh, with the Outrage. So pretty much, I lost uh, really early on in this battle, and then I sort of had a chance to come back, but I had to make some ridiculous 50-50 predictions, which he was just way ahead of. So obviously, like, he didn't win because of the hacks, like, the 50-50s is definitely uh, what resulted in his win, so I'm not trying to take the win away from him or anything, but again, uh, had I knocked out the Weavile, or at least weakened it, with the Crocodile, I would have been in a way better position for the rest of the battle, uh, but again, you know... It is what it is, it's the game we play. He definitely made uh, some good plays towards the end there. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna be it. His channel will be linked down below in the description. Make sure to go check him out. He, as well as I, are both part of the GBA analyst team. Uh, so I definitely, you know, 
I'll, I'll see him around. He'll see me around, and uh, there's no there's no bad blood. It was a good game, and uh, he played well. And I hope to uh, have a good rematch in the future because I do believe our schedules cross once again. So yep, that's going to be all from me. I will see you guys next time. Kidding, bye.